Growing up, some of the fondest memories I have are from the times I spent fishing with my father. This time together strengthened our bond as father and son, but unbeknownst to the two of us, it inspired my entire life trajectory and started me on a path to become a professional fisherman. I was able to share my passion with my two children, Niles and Emily. Nice job. Although they may not follow in my footsteps, we form some of our greatest memories through fishing. Can we catch a fish? My career in the fishing industry has also led to some of my strongest friendships, comparable to the level of brotherhood. So today, in honor of the simple pleasures and happiness fishing brings, ah, there he is. I'll be doing a little bass fishing, followed by a billfish blitz on my 40-foot invincible with my longtime friend, Captain Quentin Dieterle. Get him, Q! Uncharted Waters with Peter Miller is presented by Salt Life. People from all over the world travel to Florida to visit and enjoy over 2,000 miles of pristine shoreline. From the Gulf to the Atlantic and down to the Florida Keys, the options are endless. And it gets better. Florida has an astounding amount of lakes, canals, and rivers filled with an abundance of big largemouth bass, with South Florida holding peacock bass as well. One of the reasons freshwater fishing is so popular is due to its easy accessibility. Anyone can do it. That's me on the right at four years old with my first fishing rod that my dad gave me. My dad always made the time to take me fishing, and by the time I was 10, we were catching billfish together. But something always draws me back to the simple, tranquil moments of bass fishing that my dad introduced me to in the lakes and ponds in upstate New York, where my passion for fishing began. This is my tackle box that I've had since I was 10 years old. Everyone jokes about it, and they think, they think that uh, it's hilarious. But you know, when you got something that works, you, uh, you don't stray from it. Let's see what we can do. Make sure you set that drag. Got one on. Let's see what we got. And it's this nice bass. Yes, nice. Look at that. Nice thing about fishing these areas, you can fish really tight spots. You can come into like a foot of water and you can actually sight cast them. Got one on, nice one on here. She's, once you start catching them, you catch them all day long. Swing them in. It's a little guy, little baby. You know, these bass, they love structure, they love docks, they love shade, they like rocks, you know, big boulders on the bottom, and it just takes a second to locate them. Come on, baby. Oh, it's a good one here for sure. This has to be good, it feels so heavy. Woo! Always such a drag, folks. You never know when that lunker's gonna show up. A lot of the bass tournament anglers don't want them to jump because that's when they'll shake the hook. So as they go to come up, you'll drop your rod tip low in the water. Oh yeah. That is a nice bass. And that is a winner right there. Ah, oh, there he is. Nice peacock. Oh, 
Among the different bass subspecies, the most interesting newcomer to South Florida is the peacock bass. Peacocks are beautifully colored with gold, orange, yellow, black, and green markings with a peacock eye on their tails. They were introduced to South Florida in 1984 as an exotic, highly sought after game fish. Peacocks were imported from Brazil, Guyana, and Peru. And these guys have a little bit of teeth, you know? So when you get the big ones, they really go wild and they can shred your hand up pretty good. Peacocks feed very aggressively and have much sharper teeth than a largemouth bass. You're able to grab them like a largemouth bass, but the jumbos will tear your hand up. All of a sudden, I hooked into a big peacock and decided to carry it across the boat to the other side to prepare for a better camera shot. In the blink of an eye, a peacock can go from completely docile, making you believe they have no more fight, to absolutely violent head shakes, making them extremely hard to hold on to. And just like that, it shook free from my grip. Uncharted Waters with Peter Miller is presented by Salt Life. Live salty. Citizen. Better starts now. Invincible. When you're serious. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. Freshwater fishing in South Florida has been a huge success. But after the big one shook free, I desperately wanted another shot at a large peacock, just to redeem myself. Ah, there he is. That feels like a good fish, actually. This is a beast. Look at the size of this peacock. The size of that tail, as big as my entire hand. That's when you know at the power and the speed, do whatever they want down here. Oh my God. Oh, so hard to hold, bro. That, my friends, is a jumbo. Maybe we'll catch a couple more. So I got one on right now. I've been fighting it for like three minutes. It's been rip and drag. Oh my God, it's a jumbo. If it stays on, it'll be a miracle. Please don't jump. Oh my God. Oh my God, oh my God. I'm gonna grab it. Oh my God, that is the fish you want. You gotta catch that one more fish, and this is the one, and we're filming on my cell phone right now. This fish has gotta be nine pounds. I'm gonna measure it out. We got 24 inches plus. We got 24 and a quarter right here. This. This is what it's all about, guys. This right here. Every single day of my life, I wake up wishing I was fishing. It's simple. People say if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. No truer words have ever been spoken. With me today is my good friend and captain that shares the same passion. And for close to 40 years, he's been running fishing charters out of Key Biscayne, Florida, giving clients memories that will last a lifetime. Quentin and I have been friends for over 33 years, and he was the captain of our tournament-winning fishing team, Get Lit, for 11 years that my friend Kit and I started back in 1990. Together, we shared amazing times, winning and or placing in 120 billfish tournaments, and through this, created a very strong friendship. You didn't just do that. I mean, how old are you, dude? You, you're killing the environment. With a rusty hook? Yeah, you don't throw <laughs> overboard. What, what are you, like a hundred year old? You're gonna throw your cigarette butts like in a, in a bird's nest? Hey, right, so you see how old I am? I That's I called old school. Quentin stays extremely busy, but when I call him to fish, he always makes it happen. Today was extra special because we were fishing on my brand new 40 foot invincible cat powered by quad 450 Mercuries. All right, here we go, we're gonna start them up. One, two, three, four. Yes. This is 40 feet of pure, invincible dynamite right here, guys. Boat has so much room. Wait till you feel this thing run in like a four foot chop. Yeah? You literally slice through it like a knife. I bet it spins nice with those engines spread out, huh? Yeah, it really does. Swinging around. 
Where's your bait? Yeah, we're gonna go to my slip, and we have like three pens of bait ready for you guys. So this is the lifeblood, guys. This is the lifeblood of everything we do is live bait in Miami. Yeah, you can catch fish with artificials, and you can do all that stuff, but if you really wanna, you know, be successful day in and day out. Live bait is the key. So are we done here? We're done. I got Ariel waiting out there with three dozen gogs and some pilchards. Getting bait from my boy Ariel over here. Gagalaya especial. Nice to see you, man. You know what we call those in Mexico? Caballito. Ooh, those look really nice, dude. They're fat. You can always tell a good bait. When you put them in that net and dip them in the well and that thing goes crazy. Woo! Here come the chummers, guys. This is a big load right here. That is a load of pilchards. So we're gonna use these to throw them overboard and have them swim with the boat and set up like a popcorn trail, a bait. This is beautiful, man. Mercury, go boldly. Fishing chaos, fish smarter, not harder. Low T center, reinventing men's health care. Yeti, built for the wild. I'm already going 45 miles an hour in nine seconds. Crazy, man. And I'm flattened out, man. So quiet. This is 48 miles an hour, and you're like literally like you could drink a cup of coffee. And I can hear you talking over oh. the motor. <laughs> That's even better. I see a couple marks on the screen right here. You can catch it and you can buy it, but you can never have enough bait. It's always best to have a wide variety to choose from. Big cigar. On any particular day, you never know which bait your target species will key in on. So we stopped at our local spot to get some ballyhoo. I feel like if we did a downwind, I could almost get a cast net throw on them. Yeah. All right, here I go. Wow, I got him that time, boys. That net's looking pretty happy. You got a lot of, a lot of ballyhoo. That's a lot of bait. How many did I get? Yeah, you got a bunch, man. Enough for me to get down on my knees to scoop him up. Oh my God, he's on his knees. I may never get back up again. Look at that bucket full of bait. Good job, Miller man. So we roll. All right, guys, time to go fishing. The sign of a good fisherman comes with his ability to connect with and decipher his surroundings. Knowing how all the species interact in the ocean's ecosystem is essential if you want to succeed out on the water. What do you think that is, a leatherback? No, I think it's a uh, loggerhead. Looks to be about the size of a uh, double garbage can lid, at least. Nice throw, Miller Man, right on his back. Anytime you see turtles, large rays, sharks, or whales, it's a good idea to toss a bait in their direction as they tend to have tasty fish following in their wake. All right, I guess there's nothing on him, huh? Yep, let's move on. Key here is noticing little subtleties. You just can't, like, pass stuff up. You know, any kind of little sign you see, you gotta try. All right, uh, there's two birds right here. Three birds in front of us. Frigate diving in front of us. He's obviously sees something, there's some activity here. Yeah. There's a baby dolphin. Oh, oh yeah, she's dolphin. jumping. But you never know, Big Mama's hanging with them. They're right here behind the boat. Here we go, we're on here, Pete. That's QB for you. Get them, man. Some more coming in with you, babe. Nice little fish. Nice little dolphin. Mahi Mahi travel in large schools to help protect themselves from larger predators. They'll typically follow their buddies, especially if they're on the hook, allowing for easy multiple catches. Watch, watch your meter right here. Ooh. Circle hook, tip down low. Ugh. Zingo. Dinner, boys, dinner. Looking good, Bo. All right, nice, look at those colors. Nice job, Q. Thank you, Pete. 
Salt Life sunglasses. See clearly. Celdration, good for you, good for our planet. Celdration is hydration defined. Invincible, when you're serious. Mercury, go boldly. Quentin and I are 30 minutes south of Key Biscayne with a cooler full of mahi. I think we should consider putting the kites out, put some big baits out, and kind of upgrade. Maybe a nice sailfish. Yeah. So this is the fishing kite, and we're about to suspend some big baits from it, which is going to be one of the goggle eyes we bought this morning from Ariel. And then we send them out, high speed, right on the surface, sending out those signals. The fish comes by and sees that, man, they cannot pass it up. So now you're basically like Geppetto. It's unfortunate these handles don't move. We now have six lines out with a smorgasbord of baits between the two kites and the flat lines. Oh, sh here, take this. There he is, shaking. Nice. Sometimes it's this, this rod, the simple rod. You're coming up jumping. My guy's off the bow now. Dude, fishing off the bow with this boat is like so perfect. Screamer. Woo! It's a feisty little guy, huh? Nice job, nice job. I mean, I could tighten the drag cue, but things are going so well. Woo! He's right here. Nice fish, Pete. Yeah, man, he's clean. Oh. Sailfish have been clocked at speeds of 72 miles per hour, making them the fastest fish in the ocean. This fish likes the camera. It might be time to cut the leader. Let's go to the back of the boat. You got your leader cutter in your mouth like a true champion. Watch your eyeballs. Whoa, whoa! Oh. Hey! Oh. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, I almost had I almost had him! Pull me in, Peter Oh my god! <laughs> Who does more weird crap than us? Nobody. That's who. I thought about going in after him. One, two, three, three! Oh, I got him on out here, Pete. I just can't tell you which one it is. <laughs> it's that one. I can't turn the yeah, damn handle. Oh my god, he's over here, Q. I can't turn the handle. I might not be able to catch him. One, two, three, three. Are you gonna catch him or is it gonna take like an hour? What's up? The reel's so stiff I can't turn the handle. That's the only thing that's stiff around you. <laughs> what chaos. Feels good to pull on one of these babies for a change. Usually I'm yelling at everyone to reel. Oh, he's always running the boat for me. And we've been fishing together a long time, and now he's on a sailfish, which is really cool. Here he comes, guys. Get him, Q. Nice fish, Pete. One, two, three, three. Still got it, Miller Man. Still got it. Walk him back, buddy. Walk him back to me. Come on, give me that bill. Almost went two for two. Look at that, a wagger. Hey, perfect. Quinn, can we catch one like normal for a minute? I know, I don't think so, dude. Yeah, Everything really. today is gonna be upside down and backwards. Hooked up, woo! This was that sunset sail we were talking about, Q. Yeah, we were. I thought you were asking me to go on a date on a sunset sail. Pick up your whole uh, rocket launcher. I'm coming through. He's gonna come up, man. He's gonna come up. There he is, jumping. Try to turn the handle faster. I can't turn the handle. <laughs> there he is. Keep it tight. When you get a bite and the line pops out of the kite, you need to take up the slack as fast as possible to get tight. There's a leader. We got the leader. Big boy, that's a big boy right there. He's swimming freaking fast. He's like, he's not even tired. So all of a sudden the fish decides to go 360, does a pinwheel around the entire 40 foot invincible. And then he goes back under the boat. Thing's gotta be a moose, bro. There he is, finally. Thank you, let's switch. Go, go. Woo! 
You're resuscitating him? I'm resuscitating myself. You want to just drag them by their bill, make sure their face is in the water. You run the boat in like three, four miles an hour, get the water pouring across their gills, it creates oxygen, and before you know it, they revive and they're feeling good. I just give them a push, let them go. All right. Good job, Phew. Congrats, Pete. It's always good to get a good fish at the end, man. A lot of action today. The ocean was alive. Miller man, we always get them. We always get them. Good times. For additional content and social media, please visit us at unchartedwaterstv.com.